Today we're going to discuss multiplying decimals by powers of 10. So let's begin. At the beginning we have 7 and 15 hundredths times 1. We can obviously say that anytime you multiply something times 1, you're going to get the same number again. Remember, that is the identity property of multiplication. I had to think there for a second. So the 7 and 15 hundredths keeps its identity and stays 7 and 15 hundredths. Let's continue looking. The next one is 7 and 15 hundredths times 10. So the thing about multiplying times powers of 10 is you have to decide, is this number getting bigger or smaller? So if the number is getting bigger, we want to move the decimal point to the right. Now we're going to move it to the right, the number of zeros there are. So we know that when we multiply something times 10, for example, if I was to say 9 times 10, it's going to get bigger. You're going to get 90. So all we're going to do is move our decimal point 1 to the right, and we're going to get 71 and 5 tenths. Pretty simple, but let's do a bunch more. The next one is times 100. So just like we moved our decimal one place to the right because there was one zero, we're going to move our decimal two places to the right because there's two zeros. So if I move it two places to the right, I'm going to get it seven and 715. Remember that decimal point can be at the end because if we were to add a zero after it, it's not going to change the answer. Let's keep going. There are one, two, three zeros here. So we're going to have to move our decimal point three places to the right because we're getting bigger. One, two, three. You have to pretend there was a zero there. Let's draw that out to the side so we can make sure we understand what's going on. Remember, if I have seven and fifteen hundredths, I can add a zero to the end and it's still seven and fifteen hundredths. You could read it as seven and one hundred and fifty thousandths, but as we know, a zero at the end of a decimal doesn't mean anything. So if I was to move that decimal one, two, three places, it would go after that zero. So we would get 7,150. Let's do the last one of these and we've got two more. So seven and 15 hundredths times 10,000. One, two, three, four zeros. Let's draw this one to the side because it might be a little bit messy. Seven and 15 hundredths four times to the right, one, two, add a zero, three, add a zero, four. So let's count that again. One, one, two, three, four. Remember, every time you move that decimal, you're moving it past one number to one place value. Once we've done that, it's back here. We can count up to put our commas, one, two, three, 71,500. Now you should see a pattern here. Let's look at this pattern. Seven and 15 hundredths, 71 and 5 tenths, 715, 7,150, 71,500. Think about the pattern that you might see because we're gonna discuss a little bit more of that later. Let's look at another one. As you can see for this one, I jumped from using 10, a hundred and a thousand to just using the powers of 10, our exponents. So let's remember that 10 to the zero means zero, zero. So 10 to the zero just equals one. 10 to the first means one zero, so equals 10. 10 to the second would be like 10 times 10 because there are two tens, so we know that equals 100. 10 to the third would be 10 times 10 times 10, and we know that equals 1,000. Remember, that's 10 to the third because it's 10 multiplied by itself three times. And then 10 to the fourth, we 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, and we know that equals 10,000. Again, let's remember 10 to the fourth because there are one, two, three, four tens multiplied by each other, and because there are one, two, three, four zeros in the product. All right, let's go back and work on these. So we know that 10 to the zero just equals one. So three and two tenths times 10 to the zero, or one, it's just gonna equal three and two tenths. It will stay the same. Now, how about 10 to the first power, or the power of one? We know that it's gonna equal 10, and we know that if we're going bigger, we go to the right. So let's take this decimal point and move it one to the right. That's gonna give us 32. Let's keep going. 
We know 10 to the second. We're going to move it two times to the right. See how easy that is? One, two. For 10, there's a zero there. 320. Let's keep going. 10 to the third. I'm going to write it out to the side because I'm going to run out of room. 10 to the third, you simply means you move it three times to the right. One, two, three. So we have 3,200. Now 10 to the fourth, move it four times to the right. One, two, three, four. Add those zeros in, add my comma, 32,000. So again, you should see that pattern, but let's do one more to make sure we see it. All right, 45 hundredths times 10 to the zero. You know that means it moves zero times and it just stays 45 hundredths. That's like multiplying it by one because it's 10 to the zero, meaning no zeros. Now, 45 hundredths times 10 to the first, you move it one to the right, is gonna give me 4.5. Two to the right is going to give me one, two, 45. You should be able to predict the next two. I'm excited to see what you're thinking. Go ahead and write them down to see what you're thinking. 10 to the third would be one, two, three, 450. And I am gonna write 45 hundredths um, times 10 to the fourth out here, just so it doesn't get messy. One, two, three, four, 4,000. 500. As you can see, we're getting 10 times bigger each time. We started with 45 hundredths, we went to 4 and 5 tenths, then 45, then 450, then 4,500. 10 times bigger each time. Now, the last thing I want to do with this is we're going to do a word problem together to kind of see how we would use this when we're talking about 10 times as much. Because eventually we're going to get to 100 times as much and 1,000 times as much. So I want to bridge that gap between what we've already learned wording-wise and how to really do it in an easy way. So Marie made $23.17 selling lemonade in front of her house last Saturday. Her older brother made 10 times as much walking dogs. How much did her older brother earn? So we know that she earned $23.17. And her older brother earned 10 times as much. Remember, it's just times 10. 10 times as much, just times 10. And we know that when we're multiplying times 10, we're making something bigger. So we're going to go to the right. And all we have to do is move that decimal point one to the right. That's it. So we're going to move that decimal point one to the right. And we're going to get $231. There's only one number after the decimal point. Now, as you know, when we read numbers in decimal form, we have to have two numbers there. So instead of being 231 and 7 tenths, you've got 231 and 70 cents. Remember how we read numbers and make sure that's a focus when you're reading things out loud to me uh, when you come back to the Google Meet. So that's the first part when we're going bigger on how to multiply times powers of 10. I'm going to have you practice a little bit. And when we come back, we're going to practice moving things to the left to make things smaller. I'll see you then.